Hey gang, Carl White here broadcasting. Actually, I'm broadcasting out of my kitchen table here. I'm sitting here at the uh, at the little table here in my kitchen, and uh, I'm the only person with a bicycle hanging up on the wall in their kitchen, for those of you watching this on YouTube. But anyway, you are listening to Loan Officer Freedom, uh, the podcast uh, for loan officers uh, in our industry, number one by uh, downloads and reviews. And uh, thanks uh, in large part to you guys for forwarding the message. And also in the large part by I lean on my guest to knock it out of the park. No pressure whatsoever, Devin. But <laughs> they don't come to listen to me, I've learned. They've come to listen to who's he talking to now. So uh, Mr. Devin Dubuque out of the greater Dallas-Fort Worth area. How you doing, my man? I'm fantastic, Carl. Thank you, uh, as always, uh, for bringing me here onto your podcast. I'm honored to be a guest. And, uh, you know, just an honor to be a part of everything we're doing here with uh, the Mortgage Marketing Animals and the Freedom Club. It's It's been a great journey. It, it, and, uh, uh, and you've been here before, but um, I had the honor of being on your podcast, which was uh, a pretty cool experience. Uh, so our topic is going to be going on the hot seat and asking some uh, questions that these will be these will, these are kind of the most common questions that I see get asked of me. And I've been writing these things down. I thought maybe Devin's got a better answer than me that I can use going forward. And so, uh, so looking forward to that, but your podcast that you do, uh, who, who, do, who do you target on that? Is that targeted to the real estate agents, to loan officers, to the consumer? Uh, who, who is the main target on that? All of it, <laughs> all of it. You know, I mean, I think our number one target is obviously real estate agents. Um, so, you know, and again, thank you for coming on to ours. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. In fact, I think we're going to release that one uh, I think it's coming out next week. So today is the fifth, uh, if you're listening to this. So we should see that release sometime uh, next week, which would be on the 15th. And that's on the Real Estate Success Partner uh, is the name of our podcast. So as you can see, uh, we're as targeted uh, real estate agents, uh, but it's also genuinely about real estate success in general. We started the podcast as an opportunity to get in front of top tier agents around the United States and utilize it as a secret weapon uh, to attract them to our business and, uh, you know, eventually, you know, gain relationships with them. And it's been very successful with that. So the agent is number one. I think number two is going to be the borrower uh, because I feel like clients need to be able to lead into a direction where um, they can trust the people they're doing business with. And uh, I say the borrower, the consumer, not necessarily so much for us, but more for the agents, because when we're putting these podcasts out there for them and they get to hear top tier agent uh, talking about the amazing things that they do, they can grow a little more connected uh, and it helps the agent uh, with some free marketing. Right. Uh, and then, you know, loan officers, obviously, we'd love to attract great loan officers to our team. And uh, we use it as an opportunity, you know, to get in front of loan officers that we are considering bringing over, uh, you know, to the Dubuque team here at Look and Close Mortgage. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this might go in a different direction here. Um, so on the podcast, which, by the way, so you've done a great job of attracting top talent, I must say. So uh, like me, you're a. I you're, said we got you on there, Carl. So that's a. <laughs> but you're, you're a branch manager. And, I am. Uh, are you, are you a producing branch manager or non-producing? Non-producing branch manager. So like me, so you're non-producing like like I am. So uh, Not quite as cool as you, Carl, but I'm working on it. Well, you might <laughs> not be quite as cool, but your numbers are impressive, brother. So uh, is, is it okay if I share? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So you were sharing with me before we hit the record button that, uh, that you're running uh, around 30, give or take, closed units per month. That's uh, correct. Average loan amount, uh, 254. Uh, so it That's seems like... Right. You're kind of in that same bucket. I think last I checked, my average loan amount thing was two eighty seven. So same, yeah. same ballpark. We uh, move up occasionally, but if you look at the even killed across the year, it's about two fifty four is where we live. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's kind of where ours is. Ours, ours has gone up a little bit, you know, with the cost of living. Uh, for right. We've never been a real jumbo shop, you know. It's just not my. Yeah. But we do them, but it's not what we do. I, I, I probably would say. All right, so back to I this. Premise point. that to to all the originators coming to me is you know jumbo is not our our strongest product we've got some great ones that's not it and uh, it's not that we can't attract or do those loans but you know like you mentioned carl it's uh, uh we do better with uh, uh some of our specialty products that we we offer you know I, i've always um i took a, a bit of a vanilla approach to this over the years but i have to tell you it's worked for me well that um and i learned it from my branch my first branch manager's name was dave hoyt or is it is dave hoyt i'm forever grateful <laughs> uh and dave told me carl 
who we're looking for is Jane and John Doe. And Jane works at the local hardware store. And Joe is a school teacher. And they're in that house over there on the corner. And that house lo looks just like every other house on every other corner. And that's who we're looking for. He told me this after literally, this is this is a true story. I think I was like first week in the business and I found somebody wanting to get a mortgage on a round on a on a round house. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, come to find yeah. out that's not standard for Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or FHA right. or PA. And I thought, well, why not? And that's when he gave me a little speech. Uh, and that 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 served me well. Not that we don't have these, you know, outlying stuff, but boy, there's a bunch exactly. of money in the, and I'm using air quotes here, normal. Hey, so tell me a little bit more about this podcast. So how long have you been doing it for? So we started just over a year ago. Uh, we were at your Nashville Freedom Club event and uh, you uh, stood on stage and talked about the value of a podcast, right? Uh, one of the things that really caught my attention is you said, hey, look, you know, once you get out there on these social platforms or YouTube, and the amazing agency out there interviewing top tier agent Gretchen Coley, right from uh, North Carolina, uh, and they go, "Oh wow! Well, if they're on this podcast with Gretchen, they must be doing business with Gretchen." And now all of a sudden, um, you have that same value to them as, "Oh wow! This must be a top tier loan team." Um, next thing you know, we're calling them, and they go, "Oh well, I know who you are. You're working with Gretchen Coley," and uh, that really caught my uh, my my attention. Uh, also sitting next to David Wynn, who you know well, um, you know, we looked at each other and we go, let's start a podcast when we get back. So uh, literally uh, the following week uh, in my kitchen, uh, we shot episode number one. Good for you, man. Yeah, I, I, I found the podcast has done, does, does this all well. Everybody that's doing it does this all well. And, and it's exactly what you said. They, they hear you talk, they hear you interviewing in, insert agent that's doing really well. They right. Go, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you see me sitting at a, uh, at a at a lunch counter and I got Taylor Swift on my left side and Blake on my right side. Right. Uh, on my right side, you're going, dude, who is this guy? Right. And it, it kind exactly. of it has that effect. And uh, it does. It so does. How, how, how often do you put yours out? So we have been doing one a week. We're actually gearing up to do more in 24. That's our motto this year. Let's do more in 24. Uh, and not just with the podcast, but just with everything that we're doing, right? You know, um, so at the end of the day, uh, we, we shoot about two to three every Friday. Um, sometimes we shoot extra so that we have them when we're unavailable to shoot a podcast. Uh, and then we typically drop those on a Thursday. Uh, we're thinking about doing a Tuesday and a Thursday schedule in 24 uh, for season two. And uh, we're just gearing up to have enough in the hopper to where we can make that happen. Yeah. Now on yours, are you, so like you and I right now, uh, those that are watching on YouTube might recognize this, uh, where we're on uh, Zoom, we're doing a Zoom meeting because you're at your, you're at your office in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. I'm actually at my home office in Salina, Texas. Uh, oh. My, my uh, physical office is in uh, Dallas or Addison. Okay. okay. And I'm here in the Tampa Bay area. And so we're talking to each other via Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. is, is that, is that what you use for yours too? Do you use zoom or do you use something else? It's a combination of, uh, we started with zoom. Uh, we transitioned into a program called Riverside. We like Riverside because we do use the, the video side of it to help with the marketing for the agents. Uh, and the reason we transition to Riverside is because it shoots on both sides, uh, in HD quality. And then when it's done, it uploads the HD wow. video. Uh, as you know, with zoom, sometimes you can get some imperfections and this keeps a nice digital, uh, video uh, in a higher HD quality. Uh, my videographer then takes that and he'll cut that down into 30, 45 second clips. And we put those out on uh, paid ads through IG, uh, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and we tag those realtors and we advertise to them, hey, this is some free marketing to get you in front of a bigger sphere uh, as well as our sphere, right? And uh, that's why we like to shoot in a little higher res video. Uh, but we do have, as luck has it, we had some high def, fancy schmancy cameras sitting around the office. Uh, so we've got a couple and my videographer had a couple. So we've got four HD cameras, multiple microphones. And when we get a chance, we like to do uh, on sites just because it feels a little more professional. It has that really talk show look and there's nothing like having a top tier agent walk in and you've got lights and multiple cameras and they think, wow, this is all for me. It yes, it is. It certainly is. So uh, we started doing some of them face to face, and we've even done some on sites where we'll come out. So we have a lot of fun with it. 
I like that. I, but I, I, one thing I want our listeners, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, is um, I think it's important to know that you don't need four cameras and you don't need lighting because nope. uh, I still don't have four cameras. I still, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it, but I hear what you're saying. It, it uh, that's that's you could work up to that, but don't wait. That's right. you, it's not necessary. It's not started. necessary. You know, we interview people from across the United States. And of course, when I'm talking to an agent in Florida or North Carolina or Kansas or uh, Utah, we're, we're doing it all through video. And we don't need Riverside. We can use Zoom. In fact, our first several podcasts were shot right on Zoom. And guess what? Nobody reached out and said, man, that camera quality just didn't do it for me, right? You know, we had the same results uh, that we had utilizing uh, the Zoom cam uh, and the agents too. They didn't, you know, they didn't look at it strange at all. Uh, when we offered to hop on on a Zoom call. And uh, and, and I'll tell you this too, Carl, and I, I bring this up because I know sometimes loan officers may be sitting back going, yeah, but who's going to take an interview with me? I don't even have a podcast up. When they look me up, they're not going to see anything. Well, guess what? We started in that exact same situation and we found the th same thing that you've taught us, Carl, is that when you ask these top tier agents, all you've got to do is just ask. Most of the time, they're honored to step on camera and talk about what they do because let's face it, girl, we in this industry love to talk about what we do. <laughs> so, sure. um, we've had no issue with agents showing up for a zoom cam call. Uh, and, and there's never been a situation where the questions go, well, how many followers do you have? Uh, you know, well, uh, how many people am I going to get in front of? We've had a couple ask, right. Um, but typically it's when we start bringing in the real high profile agents that they want to know that. Right. Um, but your average agent doing 30 loans a year, they don't care if you have one follower or 10,000 followers, they'll still jump on and they'll shoot the podcast with you and they'll have a great time. Yeah. You can, you can, I've, I've come to learn that you can have two cans put together with string and, <laughs> and they're reaching for one of the cans, right? They just, they just want a little spot. Me too. Right. I mean, that's, that's just right. the way, that's, that's, that's the way it works. So um, I want to talk about how you get loans out of this. So for, for me, you know, back to the video thing here, just for a second to put a bow on that. For me, I think last I saw my stats, we get about five or ten percent on a good day. Actually, uh, let's say five percent. We get five mm -hmm. percent to watch the uh, the video, like on YouTube or one of the platforms. There, about ninety five percent listen to uh, on one of the podcast networks. Right. Uh, so I, I think you know. Um, I think the camera experience is really good for the attendee that's there with you, but just for our, our listening audience, uh, that by far most are going to just be listening to the audio. And so you're looking for pretty spot on audio. And, yeah. and I would say, and you don't have to be expensive, but I would not, and maybe you are, are, are you using your laptop microphone right now? I don't. So I actually have, I'll hold it up because we're right here. I have a Yeti blue mic. Uh, you can get these for 60 bucks on Amazon. Uh, sometimes a hundred depends on which model you get. Uh, or if you want to get fancy and get a really cool color, right? Um, but I did a little research ahead of time, and they said, you know, if you're trying to do a podcast and you don't want to break the bank, this Yeti Blue microphone on Amazon is one of the best mics you can get out there, and we get great, great audio from it. So I've got a, uh, I've got a microphone made by, uh, it's called an RE, I think RE27 is the name of it, mm -hmm. and uh, which is what like professional broadcasters uh, would use. So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm in the big leagues, I need to get one of those, right? So I got it, <laughs> did an A-B test on my Yeti, couldn't tell the difference. And, and like this, <laughs> this brought, th th I think it was like, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot, but it was like six, seven, eight hundred dollars, something like that. And I'm yeah. telling you, there was no difference uh, that I'm actually using one of these. Um, I, I haven't heard what it sounds like, but uh, lapel mic. You sound great. I'm wearing a little lapel mic that's wireless. Uh, and if I put a shameless plug in, if you go to carlsmic.com, carlsmic.com, uh, I get a whopping five bucks when you buy this $30 microphone uh, off of, a, I think it's Amazon or somebody. I can't remember what, somebody turned me on to it and I, I can plug it right in my cell phone and then do uh, do video, uh, do uh, record audio from a cell phone. But yeah, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff, but, but I would recommend not using a laptop mic because you don't want, like people will forgive you. For, I, I've learned over the years, people will forgive you. Your video can be a little funny. Your video can be a little grainy. Your lighting can be a little off, um, but they will not forgive you of audio. If you if you or your guest has an echo, or um, 
you know, it's not clear, they'll they'll bounce off. Like, or or if you got wind noise or anything like that, they'll right. bounce off in New York a second. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, how do you think like the reason you do the podcast? I'm, I take it is to build business. How how does it build how do you build business off of it? Is it the listeners? Is it your is it the the people that you're interviewing? They start referring to you because you made them feel like a star on the Tonight Show. Like like yeah. where's the <laughs> I think that's a great uh, question, Carl. And 100%, um, we do see some stuff come in organically uh, from borrowers or cl potential clients that saw us. Maybe I think more on the social platforms is where they're coming from, right? Because we do those paid ads on Facebook, and it's you know a 45 second clip here or there. Um, so we'll get some some traffic from that direction. But that's not where we see the the biggest uh, benefit to the business. Uh, the whole idea behind this is it's free marketing for the agents, and the agents love it. All right, so we talked about the equipment, which is basically uh, a laptop, uh, Zoom, or or some some platform like that. Go to meeting. Uh, what what's the one that you use again? What was the name of it? We use Riverside. We use Riverside. Yep. Yeah. So so you need a platform. Uh, yep. I think I pay. I don't even know what my Zoom bill is, but hundred dollars a month or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's about what we pay for Riverside. It's, you know, pennies on the dollar, you know, when you yep. look at the results that we get, right? Yeah. So. Uh, and then a microphone anywhere from $30 to probably $100 on the high end. That's uh, right. We talked about that. We talked about your guest that in your case, uh, as a general rule, it's higher producing real estate agents. That's right. Uh, gives good, interesting things to talk about. They tend to be able to talk about things, you know, they tend to be, social creatures you know or, absolutely uh, they tend not to be introverts so they're you're not having to pull information out of them because they got a lot to That's say right. successful people and then they're people that actually start referring to you um what what topics do you talk about like, like do you, do you suggest a topic or do you get them to suggest a topic like what, what do you talk about so this is where we're really off the hip and i think you know i think it all depends on who you are because uh you know the freedom club provides a great list of questions to ask and they're great questions and we take a few of those because uh, we use those as our kind of like fillers. When we feel like, hey, there's a great spot to drop this in, we'll drop that in. And two of our big questions we always ask, uh, or, or we like to toss back and forth. And I really love this one. This is probably my favorite one because it gets an emotional response and really hates, helps draw the agent to you, which is, hey, Carl, you know, so far in your professional career as a real estate agent, what's that single moment, you know, that one moment you go back to and you go, this is it. Ooh. This is why I got into this industry and then you wait because they think about it you know and they go oh ah that's hard i know but just the one thing that you go man this is why i want to do this and man i'm telling you the response we get it's magical in fact we've brought some agents to tears talking about it uh because they're proud of those moments and typically carl it relates back to one transaction with the little old lady from pasadena that couldn't buy a house her entire life and they helped her get into that first home or that customer, that borrower and wife that, you know, they didn't think they could buy a home. You know, those are the ones they go back to. And we're talking big agents, right? Agents that are doing million dollar listings and their biggest moment was the $90,000 house for the person that they, you know, that they didn't think was going to be able to buy something. They made yeah. it happen. That That's what they go with. That's number one. The other one we like is, uh, and this is a little more fun. Hey, Carl, what's your real estate superpower, right? What is you're known for? You throw those Clark Kent glasses off and who's behind there, right? Who is that? And they love that one too. Um, so those are two of them. But generally for us, it's more open mic. We just kind of explore who they are, how they got their start. Uh, you know what we do, Carl? Come we frog them. It's a coffee appointment. Family, family recreation, op occupation, and goals. And family comes up often. I love the family one because a lot of the times they'll start talking about their significant other. And then I'll stop and I'll say, hey, Carl, if your lovely wife was here with you right now, what would you say to her? Mm. And man, you want to talk about an emotional response? Yeah. You know, and we connect and it's, it's pretty special, it's pretty special. Yeah. What was your biggest fear when you started the podcast? The fear that entered my mind was... For me, <laughs> it's funny you ask because I don't get scared about a lot of things. Uh, how the heck do I get this thing on the internet? <laughs> how how I, I can shoot this thing? I can talk. We're good there. We'll figure that out. How do we actually get it posted? That was my biggest fear. I didn't know. So uh, come to find out, there's a platforms where I think we pay. 
again, it's not much. I think it's forty dollars a month or twenty dollars right. a month or something like that. And we upload it to this service, and then they blast it out. I think like thirty-two different platforms, like iTunes, and it's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's literally everywhere. everywhere. You can trip over it when you walk out the front door. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. It, it pretty much, yeah. and uh, yeah, that it really comes. It, a lot of this comes back to it's not it's not how it's who like who could help me yeah. do this. How about the editing? Do y'all uh, do, do 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 you edit your own or do you have somebody do that for you? Or? I don't. You know, I, as you know, as a uh, you know, when you've got a larger branch, you you're you're busy, right? So um, I stumbled into I have two editors, <laughs> so. Uh, one of them's uh, Edu Marketing, Ginger Bell and her team, and yep. they do a great job for us. And uh, they do more of the basic editing side and getting it put out there on the the networks. And uh, yep. I've loved working with Ginger and her team. I have somebody internally that does mine. Um, his name is John Hayashida. Uh, John's a wizard, and uh, I I stumbled into him. I don't think you necessarily need a lot of editing. In fact, uh, there's a really cool program out there called uh, it's a, Oh man, something clips. Uh, Oh, it's going to go Opus Clips, Opus Clips. And uh, ultimately, if you utilize Opus Clips, you can just upload the video from Zoom in there and it will cut it into five, four to five little 30, 45 second clips for you. And they're good. It does a great job editing on its own. And it's I think it's either a free service or it's like five dollars a month. Um, so, you know, ultimately, you know, typically, you know, you can go that route. You don't necessarily have to have this amazing editor. Uh, to put it all together. Um, again, I got lucky with mine, uh, but I did edit my first one and it wasn't that hard. You know, it yeah. took me maybe 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think the only editing we do, to my knowledge, is, and we didn't do this in the beginning, is add bumper music at the beginning and yep. the bumper music at the end. And sometimes we don't even use bumper music. I don't know I don't know when they decide when to use it or when not to, but. but uh, That's yeah, really all I did with mine. The first yeah, one was the music. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not edit edit heavy because like I'll stumble and I'll stutter and wait, what was I talking about? But to me, that adds to the flavor of it. You're you're and, real. You're a yeah, real person. Yeah, I don't want to sound like CNN or or Fox News because those right. guys you know they're they're pretty, they're handsome, they they're every hair is in place. Not me. Yeah, not me. And so <laughs> if if I try to act like them, they'll judge me to them, and I don't want to be judged to them. They're, That's right. You know they're. $10 million a year talking head pros. And I'm, I'm, That's I'm not, right. I'm not. So uh, well, I think there's an alert of that too, because, you know, it also makes it more relatable to most people, right? I, I agree. Know, this is just a normal guy or a normal gal that's out there, you know, really just putting it all on the line and, and allowing to be completely judged by anybody. Uh, and, and I think there's something special about that. You know, people that go, you know what, I'm an open book. Here's who I am and, and get to know me. And, uh, you know, I, I think people genuinely like that journey of getting to know who you are uh, because you are so open and, and raw. Yeah. Hey, so uh, we were going to start this episode with uh, the hot seat and questions, and then you went down to podcast. Uh, you know, we haven't <laughs> talked about podcasts in a while, and it's been huge for me, and I know it has been for you. It has. So changed. So, so now we got to come back on the next episode and, yes. and go to what we were supposed to be talking about to begin with. <laughs> Because uh, otherwise, Diane here in the office, she says, all right, here's what you're doing this week. And when I go off of that, uh, yeah. I, I get the wrath of Diane. And you might, yeah, you might you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She is real sweet and nice. And she is. And yeah. you don't follow her schedule, you know, and then uh, I get the well, She's got the ruler and she will slap the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not fun either. Hey, so uh, you prompted me to ask you a question in closing here. <clears throat> the president of the United States gives you a call. Hmm. he or she is urgently needed uh your skill set to help him or her with a problem what skill set are they calling you for i've heard you ask this before and i've always literally stumped me even in the car listening to your podcast i'm going man how would i answer that question and i think the thing that i'm really great at uh, and, and this is, you know, not me toot my own horn. It's just, it, it seems to be the case is taking things that are really difficult to understand, really the high end technical stuff that's hard for most people to apprehend uh, or comprehend uh, and transitioning that into a, a way of explaining it to people that a toddler could understand. Um, I think that's where my gift is, is, you know, that really hard stuff and then laying it out to where 
anybody can go, oh, I get it. That makes perfect sense. Um, and I've been able to utilize that, you know, in sales with consumers, but I use all it in my branch every single day because we're rolling out some really killer stuff with all the AI technology and all the cool things that are happening right now. And having that ability to be able to comprehend that and then deliver it to my team in a way that everybody on the team can understand it and not get frustrated or scared. Man, I think that's my gift. Yeah. Yeah. After watching you for quite a while now, I would say that I'd say that and and this is such, I was trying to sit in here trying to think of a better word and I can't come up with one because it's such a catchphrase and I hate catchphrases, but it's your leadership, like your, your ability to guide people into being a better them. And so I see these, uh, like in your case, I see loan officer, and I'm sure you do the same with your processors and loan partner. I just don't, I haven't, I haven't had the honor to meet with them. Right. But I see your loan officers when they come uh, to some of our, you're kind enough to invite them to some of our events. And you have a, you have a knack for getting people to do what they already know they needed to do, but in a cool way, no, not shame-based. Uh, you're not making them sit in the corner with a dunce hat or anything like that. It's like you're, you're leading them like with a, a carrot of awesomeness. And uh, and your ability to get people to take action and get rid of all the fluff and focus on the stuff that matters, I would say you're second to none, my brother. That's that's what I see as your really unique ability because you do it in such a cool way that people want to do it because they know it's going to work out well for them. They want to push through those fears because you help them. You help guide them through those fears, and uh, it's been fun watching you, man. It's just uh, yeah, I, I, you guys are doing this. I know you're you're closing somewhere between eight, 10 million a month. Uh, that doesn't happen by accident in today's market, right? That's. It certainly yeah. does not. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, well, and Carl, it, you know, I, I got to turn this back around because, you know, I, I, I follow everything that you do and everything that you, uh, you, you know, you talk about on your podcast and, you know, that those leadership skills, you know, you're, you're, you're my mentor, sir. You know, you need to know that, you know, I, I look at you and, and I'm honored to spend time with you because, you know, I will take everything that you tell me and I'm going to, transition that into my business and utilize that, as you mentioned, to make everybody on my team uh, or anybody, even if they're not on my team, anybody that I have the pleasure of being able to communicate with, I want to help them become the best version of themselves. That's super important to me. And I know it is to you too. You know, I hear you tell your stories. I know about the wall of checks and I know it's not about the money. You know, that wall is specifically about, you know, making people do amazing things that they didn't even know that they could do. So thank you, brother, uh, for being you. Well, it's thank a pleasure you for that. Hey, so uh, if somebody wants to reach out and ask, I don't know, about podcast or whatever, uh, what's, a, what's a good way to get hold of you, uh, Devin? So the best way to get me <laughs> is on my website. And that's because I have my Calendly link directly on the site uh, or there's a toll-free number. And we have a 24-hour day concierge desk that will track me down. They will text me a number. So if you want to talk to me, it's going to be the thedebuqueteam.com. And I'm going to spell that out because people get my last name wrong all the time. Uh, so it's T-H-E-B-U-B-U-C-T-E-A-M.com, the Dubuque team.com. So Dubuque is kind of spelled, as we would say in the South, Dubuque. Yeah, yeah, Dubuque. that's what most people think. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, uh, cool. Where's that come from? Where's, what's Dubuque? Where's that come from? So it's French in background. Uh, the ancestors, when they moved to the United States, they thought D-U-B-U-Q-U-E is just way too hard for people to comprehend. Let's shorten it up, and all they've done is just made it a nightmare for all of us uh, after the <laughs> fact. <laughs> uh, yeah. In the kindergarten class, uh, when Dubuque becomes Dubuque. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, I, 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 I could, I could see that. I could see that. So, well, brother, I, uh, as always, I appreciate you. Looking forward to our next episode. And all right, I think that's it. Hey, Devin, thanks so much for being on here. Appreciate it. For our listeners uh, here today, hey, I'm just going to ask one favor of you. Forward this episode to three of your favorite favorite loan officer friends. They would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. And we always appreciate those uh, those uh, five-star reviews or just an honest review. I always appreciate the honest reviews. So thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next episode of Loan Officer Freedom. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.